Good afternoon and welcome back to our next instalment of what to sew and grow now. So this month is for March. So what to sew and grow in March? There are so many things that we can do. So we're going to change the format of this one a little bit. I'm going to break it down. This one is just for vegetables. The next one will be for flowers. So if you're interested in what vegetables you can start to grow in March, stick with us. Right, as I said, we're going to break this month down a little bit. So before we start, we're going to cover things that you do not grow in March. Don't be tempted. Now, here in the UK, where we are focusing on what we can grow and sow now, so this is predominantly UK based, we've been having some glorious weather. It has been, I mean, we are in the middle of the UK, so in the Midlands, and it has been up to 18, 19 degrees here. I know further south it's been to like low 20s and then you get to Scotland even and it's even been up to like 15, 16 degrees up there. It is very, very tempting when the weather is like this to think, that's it, winter's over, off we go, let's go and sow all our seeds. But stop, stop. Winter shall return. It probably will return. But just in case it does return, we do have to be careful. And there are some crops that are very, very frost tender that it's just not worth sowing now. If we sow them now, we've got to keep them indoors for so long. They grow so fast. It's not worth it. Just wait. They will catch up, I promise. So these crops are squashes. Your winter squash and your summer squash. So if you're looking at things like butternut squashes, your hubbards, your curries, and things like patty pans and courgettes. No, just wait. Wait until April, even the end of April, they will catch up, they're really vigorous plants. Another thing is your sweet corn. Now sweet corn isn't frost hardy and it can really stunt growth with just one frost. It is a really good idea to just hold off that little bit longer. We sow our sweet corn in April and even in late April and they just, they do just fine. Some crops, it is really worth just waiting because nature will catch up and we don't want to be fooled by false springs. Other things are things like cucumbers that are meant for outside, melons, okra. Basically, if you look on your seed packet and it says it's frost tender, don't do it. Not yet. Now that we've got that warning out of the way, let's get into what we can sow in March. One thing I want to say before we really start this video is if there is a specific vegetable that you want me to show you how I plant or you want any advice on and you want me to show you how I go from sowing the seed to growing it outdoors and harvesting it, let me know in the comments below and I will make a concerted effort to make sure that I show you that particular plant. Right, this video is going to be broken down into three main sections. Things that you can sow indoors if you don't have a greenhouse and it's still very cold where you are things that you can grow in a cold greenhouse and then there's also things that you can start to direct sow which to me is always the point when you know spring is here when you can direct sow your seeds. There are some things that we started indoors in our January and February videos and the links to those are down below but you can still do it if you can get a little bit but you can still do it. So these are things like your aubergines and chilies. If you're starting your chilies and aubergines now, it is recommended that you grow them in a greenhouse rather than put them outside because they need that longer season of heat. So chilies and aubergines, you can still do those in March. If you are growing cucumbers for your greenhouse, then you can start them in March. It is recommended that you do this probably a little bit later in March. Um, I don't grow cucumbers in a greenhouse. I always grow them outside, so I start mine in April. But if you're doing them for a greenhouse, I have been told that you can do them in March. The varieties of broad beans that we sown in our February and January video were a variety called Aquadulce Claudia, which were varieties that you can typically sow in autumn. Whereas now we're getting towards spring, it is recommended that you sow an early variety of broad bean. So something like the Sutton would do very well now. And you don't need to put that in a heated propagator or anything, just a sunny window, so that will do just fine. And there's also varieties of pea that you can start to grow now, such as Twinkle, which is my favourite pea. Really sweet, absolutely beautiful. So we grow Twinkle every year. So Twinkle is a good one to start off now. And you can do that in something like a, a trough, say this size, and just sprinkle them over the top. You don't have to do them like every so many centimetres or inches. You can just 
like quite densely pack the trough and they will do really well. Speaking of peas, dried peas. If you like peas just for say pea shoots in salads, pea shoots come in salad bags quite often if you buy them say over winter and you may have decided that you really like them and you're wondering how can I grow them myself. A really cheap way to do that is to use dried peas. Now these are the only ones that I could find. I've used the blue box of marrow fat ones before but these you literally just plant them in your soil put them on your windowsill and you can cut the pea shoots off and if you still leave a set of leaves on there then they often will grow back so you get repeated cuttings of dried peas and they're so lovely in salads and very very nutritious too. Something that I want to start off now is my basil and basil is very very frost tender. I am growing a purple variety of basil this year and it is called red reuben. It's this one and you need to start it indoors, either in a heated greenhouse or in your house and keep it on a windowsill. But I'm going to be starting that off. And something that you can sow later on in the month, it's recommended from say mid-March onwards, is your celery. And I'm going to be starting that in my propagator, not my heated propagator, but with a, a seed tray with a lid over the top. So that's something I'm looking forward to trying. If you've know, if you've watched any of our other videos, you know that I am on the mission to find a good eating salary, not a cooking salary. So this year I am trying Green Sleeves F1. Um, I don't tend to often grow F1 varieties, but um, an F1 is just basically an unstabilised hybrid. It doesn't mean it's GMO or anything bad like that. It just means that two varieties have been crossed and as of yet it's not stable. So if you save the seeds from it, then it won't come true next time. But give it a few years time, this will be a perfectly stable variety. Top tip for sowing seeds indoors. Save your containers. This, Rue, is really into strawberries at the moment, which I'm not happy with, I'm, I'm going to say. But she's had a couple of punnets in the last couple of weeks and they're her treat. So it's better than eating chocolate, isn't it? So these little, um, punnets have holes in the bottom and they are perfectly good to use to start your seeds in. If you don't have seed pots and you want to start to grow little punnets, even from mushroom trays and that, um, if you put holes in the bottom for drainage, they're perfectly fine. Save money, stop plastic going to landfill. My last one, which you can actually sow in February, which is what it is today when I'm filming this, but March is typically the month where people sow a lot of tomatoes. So I'm actually going to sow my favourite tomatoes with you today. So let's bring the camera down and have a look at what I'm doing. So this variety of tomatoes that I'm sowing today are, if it will focus, they are Brad's Atomic Grape. So this is probably the variety that I'm looking forward to growing the most this year. Um, out of the hundred or so that I'm looking forward to trying. But um, this one has had so many great reviews that I'm looking forward to it especially. So I got my seeds, I filled my pot almost to the top with compost and I am just going to sprinkle the seeds around. I don't worry about getting them very uniform and I am growing multiple seeds in one pot and then what I'll do is I'll prick those out individually. There's a couple more in there. I'll prick those out individually and pot them on but if I'm keeping them all in one pot then I'm not getting them mixed up with anything else. That is Brad's Atomic Grape Tomato sewn in there and then I'm just going to cover that lightly with some compost. You see there's not much compost going on there at all. There's just enough to cover them over and give it a little tap down. And then probably the most important thing, label your plants. I was planning on labelling all of my pots with tape around the side so that the labels didn't get lost but the tape has now gone missing so for now we're resorting back to labels until I find my tape again. So I'm going to keep that now, I'm going to give it a little bit of water, something that you can do is just lightly spray the top and then those now will go into my heated propagator with all my other tomatoes. So I've seen my favorite tomatoes with you. So we're going to check in on how these grow over the year. I really hope they do well. Right then, let's talk about crossover crops. Now by crossover, I mean that they can be sown indoors 
in a unheated environment or somewhere that's quite cool or they can go out into an unheated greenhouse where an unheated greenhouse is still going to be a few degrees higher than outside they are not frost proof just to be clear but all of these crops that i'm going to talk about now will slowly germinate in an unheated greenhouse we've got a few to get through so get comfortable first up now it's time to do some succession sowing of your rocket. We talked about this back in January, about something that you could grow on your windowsill. Well, now you can grow it outside. If you are a fan of oriental vegetables, so things like pak choy and uh, mizuna and mustards, then you can now sow. This is a variety that I brought um, a couple of weeks ago when I did my seed reveal video. So I've got some of these going on upstairs, not in a propagator, just in a windowsill and they have the window open in the day so that it, it doesn't get too warm and um, they're coming up really nicely so this is choi som purple choi and another oriental vegetable you can grow now is mustard leaves and i'm going to get some of these on the go because they're really really nice in stir fries so two oriental vegetables to start this month lettuces again a tray of lettuce leaves in your greenhouse will produce lovely cut and come again leaves over the spring and you can start off some like full head lettuces such as um this one is strike force which is a cut and come again or cut the whole lettuce kind of um variety and upstairs i've also got some romaine and some winter density which are propagating away up there they seem to be doing really well so it, you can start off some lettuces in say in little pots or in modular cells and they will be ready to go out as soon as the frost has passed what we need to talk about is frost dates now here in the uk where i am my last frost date is the end of april pushing it the first week of may when you are sowing your seeds they will have descriptions on the back on some of them that will say so six to eight weeks or say eight to ten weeks before your last frost date you need to pay attention to that because my last frost date will be very different to what your one is from the south of the country up to the top there may be a difference of say four to five weeks it's easily tempting and i've said this in my videos before to just start all the seeds start all the seeds but you have to think about what space you've got it is better to stagger your sowings and do things that can wait a little longer before you sow them. Instead of just sowing them all in one go, then you may run out of space, they may not have the right conditions. It really is worth checking your last frost date because something may grow very fast and by the time it is of a certain size, you may be wanting to put it outside, but your frost may still come and again, one frost and it's dead as a dodo. Brassicas. March is a great month for starting brassicas. I can't wait. So, one, a new one that I'm trying this year is broccoli rabe, and it says the first sowing can be under cover in late winter onwards. The key word in there is under cover. So we don't direct sow our brassicas yet. With your brassicas, it's a good thing to sow them into modules, or say little three inch pots like this, and then you can pot them on individually afterwards. But there are loads of brassicas that we can sow this month. So I've got my broccoli rabe, which I'm really looking forward to trying, and I'm going to sow that in our video coming up next week, which will be our potting on and transplanting video from our February video, from our February seeds that we sown video. So the seeds that we sown in our February video last month, we'll be potting them on in my next video next week. I hope that makes sense. I struggle to explain that every month, don't I? Sprouts, I'm going to get some sprouts started. Broccoli, so Calbrees, eh? Calbrees. Greyhound cabbage, I love this cabbage. It's a pointy sweetheart kind of cabbage. And they do really, really well. And then I've got another variety which is kale. And this is scar curly scarlet. So we're growing scarlet kale rather than green kale this year. We find it doesn't suffer as badly with whitefly and it's just nicer. I find it more tender and tasty. And also the colouring, and I'm going to try and say the word, and somebody's going to laugh at me. It's amanthracycin? Amanthracycin. Whatever that word is. 
Vegetables that have that black coloration or the purple coloration have a higher content of romanthocytin and that makes it a superfood that makes it really healthy for you. So the denser the color, the more healthy it is for you. So there's some of the brassicas that we're doing this month. There's still time to get your leeks in. We sewn them in our last video, but there's still plenty of time to do them now. Oh, this is one that I, I it, it's actually a brassica. Brassica, by the way, means anything like cabbage, sprouts, kale, cauliflower, broccoli, calbrise, even kohlrabi, and even turnips and radishes. They actually come under um, brassicas as well. But um, kale, this is Nero de, Nero de Toscana, which is like dinosaur kale, is it? Don't know. People call things different things and it's often difficult. I think it might be confusing to new people and the different names that are bounced around for each different vegetable, such as broccoli, as we know it in the UK, is now apparently called calbrise or calbrise and um, coriander is called cilantro in other places or zucchini is courgette and um, spring onion is scallion. There are lots of different names, but I will put them up on the screen as I'm doing this and um, that's what I'm trying this month and that'll be a first time growing it for me. Chard. And remember we tried chard for the first time last year properly and we loved it. So we are growing some in March. Now it says on the packet April to July, but that's for direct sowings. We are starting them in our little pots first. And we're doing that in unheated, so it's not in the propagator, but we're going to start some in pots and um, hopefully we'll get a nice early crop of chard. Now, they are a hardy plant, they're, well, at least they're quite hardy, but when they're seedlings, everything is a bit more vulnerable when it's a seedling. So always keep that in mind, something may be very hardy when it's a full plant, such as brassicas we leave in all winter or leeks we leave in all winter. But when they're a tiny seedling, they're just that little bit more vulnerable. So take care of them, they're only babies. Okie dokie then, let's talk about direct sowing of seeds. Now this is where it all gets a bit exciting. It's that time when we think spring really is nearly here. But a word of caution. If you're going to direct sow your seeds, it may be worth waiting until the end of March, closer to when the weather is warming up and your last frost date is that little bit nearer. If you are going to direct sow now, then it is worth using a cloche or a um, tunnel over the ground to warm it up and give it a few more degrees over the rest of the soil it will make all the difference in germination because there is no point in chucking your seeds into the ground and then they don't germinate and then you have to sow again it's just a waste of seeds so try and warm up that soil a little bit and now we're going to show you some of the seeds that you can absolutely start to sow in March the majority of seeds that you can sow in March are root vegetables and root vegetables don't like manured ground. So if you've got a piece of ground and you've put manure on it over the autumn, it is not suitable to put your carrots and parsnips and anything of that kind in because it will cause them to fork. Root vegetables also need a soft ground and sandy, stone-free, or when that root goes down and it hits a stone, they will just split and cause like octopus kind of carrots. And whilst they're amusing and absolutely still edible, the goal is always for lovely straight carrots, isn't it? So, talking about carrots, let's sow some carrots in March. Now, these ones are Chantenay Red Court, which are an heirloom variety, and um, we will be direct sowing them in the next couple of weeks. So, similar to carrots, and they need a similar conditions of soil, so no manure, sandy, no stones, is parsnips. Parsnips are difficult to germinate, or historically difficult to germinate. So some people like to chit them first, when chitting means putting them on a piece of wet paper and laying your seeds out and I'm going to show you how I do that right now. So what you need to chit your parsnip seeds are your parsnip seeds, some kitchen towel or paper towel and a seed tray. Here I'm using a strawberry tray, so just tuck that in there, dampen it down with some water. You don't want it sopping wet, you just want it equally moist. And then we get our parsnip seeds, which are flat like this. Can you see those? And then we just sprinkle them on the surface.
I try to keep them quite equally spaced out so that I can get them out easily. You don't want them sticking together. So there you go. And now the idea is that you put them somewhere sunny. So what you're looking for is for a tiny little sprout to come out from those seeds, a little white end. And then you direct sow them into the ground. Don't wait for that sprout to get too long. If it is a centimetre or more, it is too big and it will just fork as it goes into your ground. So keep them quite little. In terms of parsnip seeds, it is best to use the freshest seed you have. So go out and buy parsnip seeds fresh every year because their viability degrades very quickly. Once I've put them in here, let's give another quick spritz. And they are ready to go on the windowsill and ready to be planted out. Now, these are just a test one. I am not going to plant these. I'm not direct sowing them for a few weeks. Although the weather is absolutely beautiful, I'm not risking it just yet. I don't want the ground to become really frozen and hard in a couple of weeks' time. So I'm going to wait. And I'm probably going to do them around the second or third week of March, depending on the long-term weather forecast. So I always recommend looking at your long-term weather forecast before you plant anything out. Don't look at what's going on outside the window today. No. Another crop that likes um, the weather to be a bit cooler is turnips. And these ones are our favourite turnip and these are snowball. So we will be direct sowing a few of those in the next couple of weeks. And we will do a few at a time and do them gradually over the summer. So these are a succession sowing crop. They're not something that will sit in the ground for a long time. They grow very quickly. So we'll do a few at a time. We'll either eat them fresh and then gradually we'll build up a store to put in the freezer. So turnips, if you like them small and tender, are a great one to start in March. Radishes, again, a lovely one to start. Radishes do better if they are in open ground. I have grown them in pots, but their roots they just don't seem to do as well. So open ground, but maybe put a cloche over them to, to keep the soil that little bit warmer and you will have radishes so quickly. So it's like four to six weeks, you will have a radish crop. So I am going to sow my radishes about mid-March and I'm going to put cloches over the ground ready for them. I don't have a designated space for radishes. I am going to fill them around other areas. They're ready so quickly. So if you've got crops that aren't due to go in until say the end of May or even June, then radishes are a great one to fill in that space because they grow so fast. Same as turnips. And then beetroot. Now we actually sow our beetroot in modules and we have already started some indoors now. I um, started them a, few, a couple of days ago and they are going to go out to our new greenhouse because they don't need heat to germinate. But direct sowing them, you can do it again from about mid-March. Beetroot are a great crop to start direct sowing in March, but we actually start our beetroot in modules. We don't put them directly into the ground. So in next week's video, I'm going to show you how we do that. And we actually find that you get better results because the ground that they're going into is surrounded by that chunk of compost and it doesn't get hard with all the rain and set in cold weather. They have more soft material to help them expand. But I'll tell you more about that next week. This list of seeds that we've been through is not an exhaustive list. There are so, so many vegetables that you can start in March. Just remember what we said at the start of this video though, there are some vegetables that are just not worth starting yet. They grow too fast, you will have a house full of triffids before you know it, or a greenhouse full of triffids. Not worth it, just wait, they will catch up. It is worth waiting. All the ones that we've been through today, I am either going to be sowing in the video next week, or I'll be waiting a couple of weeks, but either way, I will bring you along and show you what we do. This is a journey of what vegetables we're growing as well as ones that you can grow yourself and if there is anything that you want to know specifically about as I said earlier in the video pop it in the comments below and I will show you how I grow it from seed to how it's planted out and when we harvest it. If there's any particular specific vegetable you're interested in let me know down below. So thank you for watching. This is Jazz at Alternative Small Holding. Today we have done our March seeds to sow and it was just the vegetables. Come back in a day or two and we will have our flowers edition because flowers are important for pollinators and for just generally lifting the spirits. So take care, happy seed sowing. If you've got any questions, let me know. If there's something I've not covered in enough detail, let me know and I will try and help you along the way. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.